when you buy an instrument, it's the whole package. You don't really consider all the different beats and pieces that go into the design and manufacturing of something like this. You just play it. And that's amazing. If you're in this channel, then probably you want to take a step further and try to design your own instruments. Or you're just a curious person, which is cool, which is very, very cool. In this video, I want to talk about enclosures. Transition. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, and let's maybe uh, move things around here. I'm going to show different instruments. I'm going to put these aside for a moment, and then I'm going to look at a couple of things. We're going to look at materials. We're going to look at techniques. The first thing I want to talk about is this. When you're designing your first product, you actually don't really necessarily have to design an enclosure. Some products can be bare bone, PCB, electronic board. If it's built well, and if the concept is cool, if it's fun to play, it is a product. And this is something you always need to consider. You always need to remember. The reason that people start with modules, with designing modules, is simply because of that. Well, because of might be a lot of different things, but one of the main things that make it really uh, easy, accessible for people to get started with designing their own instruments is simply the fact that you don't really need to think about a standalone device. This is going to be paired with other devices. So in terms of functionality, you can create things that are hyper-focused, like this beautiful LaRushed, uh, sorry, Jason, for pronouncing it really, really well, um, a module that is doing a very specific thing really, really well. Um, in this, again, you don't really have an enclosure because the enclosure is basically the Eurorack case and you just mount this. When I started um, this journey with building my own instruments, I actually didn't really know much about physical objects, like designing physical things. So this was the first a leap of faith that I took and I designed this board basically on the idea that I really hate breadboards and placing things on this like potentiometers, knobs, switches, jacks um, can be very uh, rewarding because you can simply just place them where you want and then you connect all the wires under then you can design an instrument with it and this allowed us to design uh, for example, this little guy right here, this is the first version of Spotikach. And uh, as you can see, you can put all sorts of components here and then basically make a faceplate like this one and even have like touchpads because these are all touchpads. And this is the first version. We're going to talk about this um, further later. Um, but for now, these boards can actually be really useful and they can be a product. So first version of anything can be a PCB board. Transition. Now let's take it a step further. We are going to talk about uh, Simple Touch 2. So Simple Touch 1 was the PCB, bare bone PCB, right? Touch 2 on the other hand feels different. It feels like a product and there is actually not much that is changing here. We're still using the same materials. We're using electronic boards, PCB boards, 1.6 millimeters. So it's not, uh, it's, it's a standard. It's just like this one. And these are really um, rigid and sturdy. And if we place them like this with a 10 millimeter standoff in the middle, we can actually create something that feels more stable and more like something I can hold in my hand and play. Another thing that was very important in this design is the faceplate. The fact that you have now a faceplate, and this actually comes with multiple faceplates because you can actually change the firmware and then changing the faceplate can give you the, the full experience of that firmware. This again improved on the, the basic experience that this felt like and made it feel more like a product. Now, while this is still PCB, half transition now, we're going to look at Audrey 2. Audrey 2 is coming with an enclosure that is made out of plastic. This is something that I'm printing 
in my workshop and it's it's actually really solid this one here is is not really built let me build this uh, because of this enclosure it takes it a step further in terms of durability um, it feels a bit more like a professional instrument although it's still made by hand one by one all these different oh and actually another really nice thing about it is that we can then place a faceplate on the back this is fun because it allows me to put these really beautiful drawings from uh, Sophie who did an internship with me and uh, she made all these as like uh, fun sketches so if you open it up you're going to discover this thing and you can actually just uh, flip it to the other side and that's also just really cool to have this as part of the design and that's nice but let's take a step further into the expensive stuff So as I was doing research into the different enclosures that we could use for Spatikach, this guy right here, I was looking at the devices, first of all, that I own, because, well, I bought them, and they are with me for many, many years. One excellent example is the Digitone. So let's have a look at how is the Digitone built. What is this right here? Do you see this line? This connection. This is basically a metal enclosure. That's either aluminium or metal sheet. Uh, I don't know because I'm, uh, again, I'm not an engineer, but uh, I can tell this was welded here. Um, and you can, you can really see that this is a sheet metal because it literally looks like origami. So it's like, it's like folded. And this is a technique that takes us a step further towards something that is super robust because metal and aluminium are really strong. Metal is three times heavier than aluminium and metal is easier to weld. So welding like these parts right here are going to be cheaper to do with metal. But you can do this stuff with aluminium as well. It just requires more work and it's hand labor and hand labor takes uh, a lot of time which costs much more money. When you're creating an enclosure from sheet aluminium or metal you can weld which again makes it more expensive but you can also not weld so here's an example of the 4ms enclosure and you can really see that this metal sheet is simply folded and that's it it is just folded so i can bend it a bit this is probably metal. Again, I don't know if any of you is a mechanical engineer or know about uh, the design of this, uh, then maybe you can share in the comments. But sheet metal doesn't have to be welded and it still is feeling really robust. This is a, a really good enclosure that will do the job. Okay, last but not least, we have molded parts and I don't really know much about this uh, so maybe some of you can uh, shed some more details on this but basically uh, these enclosures are made either from plastic or from aluminium and they're uh, like uh, I think that the this is called uh, casting so like the aluminium is casted into this part the whole enclosure is one piece and there are no connection lines or anything like this it's literally one piece um, of course with the rubber feet and, and, and stuff but like this whole thing is one one piece and then you put the faceplate and all the electronics inside of this piece uh, this is the aluminium one this is a plastic one the stylophone basically liquid plastic that's being injected into a shape you design this shape an inverted shape of these parts and then you inject plastic into it when it's soft it hardens and then you get these pieces. It will cost you something like 10 to 15,000 euros to make the mold. And that basically separates the, the bigger companies from the smaller companies. Transition. Now, when it comes to Spotekach, the dilemma was, 
Should we continue with the same enclosure or design that we came up with for Audrey, which is something that I can basically build, assemble at home? Or can we take it a step further? And we chose for taking a step further. We basically took all the money that we made in the last 12 months and we put it in creating the new device. And we decided we're going to go with sheet metal because, you know, um, molding is going to cost much more money than we can and we don't really know how many people are going to buy this so we decided we're going to work with sheet metal um, we are working with aluminium and it is going to be welded it's going to be painted in black matte black and we're going to have midi in midi out stereo out headphones um, power and a reset button so you can actually upload the code directly here. Uh, so we're like taking it a step further. There is a lot of electronics inside that we don't have on Audrey. There is much more components. There are plenty uh, CV ins and also outs. This is taking it to a whole new level in terms of functionality. And because of that, I thought we should actually take it a step further in terms of the enclosure. Before I wrap this up, I wanted to ask you if you guys would want to have more like deep dive tutorials that are um, like technical tutorials. Like how would you approach designing something like this in Shaper 3D? Um, I don't know, to the level of like shortcuts and like, like working on the computer and designing stuff like this or like KiCad uh, designing interfaces. I am documenting this process, but I don't know if you guys are interested in this. So if you are, please comment below. Uh, this also helps us grow as a community and brings more people to the channel because YouTube will then share this with other people. Please like and subscribe as always and share this with your other nerdy friends so we can make more instruments together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Transition.